So this section here, we're going to talk about a little bit about the ransomware challenges. Uh, and um, again, my name is Jim again from Index Engines, taking you through this. But if you monitor, I mean, you read about it in the press, you can't help but read about it. But if you monitor it like we do, what they've done two years ago was like child's play compared mm -hmm. to what they're doing today. And there's two pieces of it is how they penetrate and get in. You know, the solar winds was pretty, pretty interesting and pretty smart. Um, but then once they get in, kind of what they what they do to the corrupt the data, and both those sides have been changing. The what they've been spending a lot of time is is the infiltration, how they get into the data center. Uh, but now we're seeing um, there's a lot of activity in terms of what they're doing once they get in. So the important thing with CyberSense is to define not only what it is but what it's not. So a lot of companies have spent a ton of money on the left side of the attack, investing in stopping the attack, right? <laughs> So that's your traditional threat detection, endpoint detection, signature scanners, all that stuff. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. Um, so what we've seen on that side is a lot of these vendors, the data protection vendors, adding these capabilities onto their data protection, their, their backup products. So a lot of them are adding signature scanning. You know, why? It's easy just to bolt that on and add it. You know, if you look at some of these stats, you know, signature scanning is, you know, 50 plus percent effective in finding it because they're constantly changing. All you got to do in a malware is change the entropy algorithm and the signatures change, right? So it's, it's easy to do. Uh, common vulnerability detection, honeypots, you know, putting in some secret stuff that they're going to want to go after. System file activity, very commonly done there. So they're adding, they're, they're, a lot of the backup vendors are trying to add these capabilities because they're readily available, easy to integrate in, and they're trying to stop the attack. But backup isn't really, that's not designed to stop the attack. It's designed to really protect the data. So you know we're seeing the, that approach is is common, but what we focused on really is the post attack side is really being smarter in terms of investing in making sure the data is good and in analyzing the data because it gets down to that. There's an interesting Gartner report. I'm sure you're all Gartner fans here, but there's a Maverick report that says basically it says you will be hacked, so embrace the breach. It's actually one of the better Gartner reports, but basically says slash your cybersecurity spending and redirect it to data resiliency initiatives. So we couldn't agree more with that. So. so when we talk about ransomware attacks, a lot of the vendors are really just focusing on checking the integrity of files. You know, but we're seeing attacks on core infrastructure. Active Directory is a database, right? So um, attacking core infrastructure, attacking databases, attacking backups. We're seeing a lot of these attacks that they're encrypting the entire backup image or they're severing the connection to the cloud. You know, so they're, they're, they're very smart in how they approach this stuff. They, they really don't want you to recover. They don't, you know, they, they use the combination of making it difficult to bring the business back up online. I mean, I sat in a session at Dell Tech World last year and, and one of the, one of the uh, customers there from a healthcare organization was explaining what he had to do to recover. He had to go to, to bare metal, start installing after directory, rebuild after directory, rebuild the network. He was almost in tears explaining what he had to do. He goes, I hope no one ever has to deal with that. Um, they want to make it very difficult to, to recover. That's, you know, that's how they make their money. So a lot of the common approaches that we're seeing out there is organizations just doing metadata analysis, you know, looking at, you know, did the file size change pretty dramatically or so on. So there's a lot of variants that we're seeing out there that don't change, that don't change the file name or the file size. I'll show you some examples of those. So they're, they're very smart and they'll figure out a way to circumvent this stuff. You just give them some, you know, some of these capabilities and they're like, oh, we can work around that stuff. A lot of them use these threshold change rates. So they'll say, you know, the backup size change from this to this on a daily basis. That's not normally the case. It's too big. Or the number of files that were deleted was this percent on Tuesday, but then, you know, double that on Wednesday. That's unusual. So they, they kind of do, you know, guesswork in terms of, uh, that behavior doesn't seem like normal activity. So um, they're doing these you know, threshold change rates, but there's these slow attacks, which I'll talk about, which are high below the covers of those. Um, a lot of folks use entropy. We use entropy. It's one of the statistics that we use um, to find data. So they're looking at the full entropy. Entropy algorithms look at the random disorderness of a database, of a database or a file or a full backup image. And when you start encrypting stuff, the entropy score goes up. So. Pretty straightforward, but they'll look at the full entropy change rates of the backup image and say, "Hey, that that kind of was too much today." 
Um, but one of the things they've started doing, the bad actors, is over the past few years is doing partial encryption, not encrypting full blocks of files. They're doing intermittent encryption inside the file and just doing a couple pieces here and there. So they're just, they have a bag of tricks that they just keep on pulling out of. And then a lot of, a lot of them really focus on validation of files only, but we know databases are being attacked. So these, these are kind of the common approaches. So what, what we invested our time in is really doing the content-based analytics, looking inside files and databases. So if you look at some of these ransomware, you know, the simple corruption that's easy to detect, you know, that, that's out there. But things like lock file and buy and lie and buy and lie, and that's a fairly new one, that's doing partial encryption inside the file. So you need to go inside the file to look at this to see if that's happening. CyberSense does that. Um, Exorist is, is using XOR encryption algorithms that don't create high levels of entropy. You know, there's a whole bunch of algorithms that don't do that. So you need, you need additional content analytics to detect what's happening there. AlphaLocker and Corona, they maintain the original metadata. Um, time time and, and the new variant of WannaCry is very slow attacks. You're doing 200 files per hour, slowly doing this over time. Uh, and then, then Globe Imposter is doing database corruption. So we, we made the bet that content-based analytics is critical to being resilient here in terms of data. And you know, probably a couple of years ago, it may have been overkill, but these guys, we knew they were smart and they would catch up and they would start doing stuff like this. So the important point is, and, and when you talk about, you know, and we talk to customers all the time, they're like, well, you know, these, these tools have easy recovery capabilities and so on, but how do you know you're recovering good data? Yeah. How, have you inspected it and checked the integrity? So, and this is the kind of stuff that's out there on the market today. This is being used on a daily basis. So Jim, I've heard that ransomware activities are slowing or they're not as successful as they used to be two or three years ago. Uh, are, you, are you seeing evidence of that or? They, there's a lot of talk about that. I mean, they were slowing a lot because of the war. I mean, a lot of this comes out of allegedly Russia um, and the war kind of, kind of impacted that because they kind of use those people to go more towards nation state attacks. But um, we're still seeing them. I mean, we're, they're still happening. I mean, they're, they're out there. I mean, they're, they're becoming, um, I think, bigger. There's some bigger attacks and just then very focused attacks. But I don't know, I, we read about them every day. I mean, yeah. they're happening all the time. Yeah, I know, uh, I know like, they're still I mean, happening. I, I talked yeah. to the mayor of the yeah. town I live in recently. Yeah, there's stuff. She said some of her colleagues yeah. are having this exact and, and, it's like, and they're, you know, they're not going for big paydays. I mean, they can go to local towns and ask for 100K. I mean, these guys are, in, you know. Well, they, they went after Oakland and Vallejo, Oakland, yeah. which are two very big cities. Yeah. Yeah, those are big. And, and you know, the, the thing that I always puzzles me is you read about it, and it's like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks, and they're still recovering. It's like you need to rethink your data protection strategy if it's taking you that long to recover. You know, one of the things, I don't know if you read recently, one of the data protection software companies, Rubrics, got attacked recently themselves. So, I mean, it's, it's you know, you, you have to create, you know, a real powerful message and powerful technology to avoid these kind of things and avoid the... And, and you can't get by without talking about it. I mean, they, they weren't talking about it until they found there's regulatory issues about data being exposed because they expose you know, personal data out and there's, you can't just ignore that stuff. So it gets out there. But you don't, you don't hear about it. I mean, financial services firms you know, cover this stuff up. But it's, uh, you know, I was just talking to you know, uh, a partner over in Ireland and the Irish healthcare system got attacked about a year ago. 85% of their data was encrypted in there. And they... Um, his wife works there, and he goes, what you read about this is actually a great report from like Pricewaterhouse or some firm that did a deep dive on it because it's all public domain information. But he goes, you don't understand exactly what happened. It was worse than, than anybody knew, wow. you know, just in terms of what happened there. So, so I, you know, they're making too much money to go away. I mean, you know, everything you read about, the government's trying to lock down on Bitcoin or whatever they're trying to do, it's like, they'll just go to something else. I mean, you know, it's... it's this is going to take a, a massive effort. But again, a lot of the customers' environments are just outdated. You know, when's the last time you put a security patch on some of this out the software that's not in production any longer? It's in production, but not being built any longer. You know, so. Anyway, so, you know, move past that, but I think you, you just need to understand what's happening out there. I mean, you, you read about it, but, but they're, they're not sitting on their laurels and they're not just sitting there, you know, doing nothing. They're, they're, they're advancing. And they're some of the smartest technology organizations, you know, in the globe. 